think, well, we had a question come in and from Jimmy dot design. I think this might be a good, a good segue to, um, kind of talk about like the nitty gritty and how we kind of work with our clients, price them out, do quotes and things like that. Because it, it's a common question. Like, how do you price yourself? Jimmy was saying, I've been on and off for the freelance life for a little bit and I'm not sure what I should charge and slash could charge and how should I go about dealing with this stuff? And what do you guys think about that? Mm. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, we, James and I have discussed this a lot. Money is definitely a, a, could be a taboo subject and, you know, it, it's something that I, I feel open about. Um, not everyone does, so I won't make anyone say any numbers, but I, I think there is a system that we can kind of create to, I don't know, help you guys figure out what, what you should charge for client work. Right. And I know you've had, you've given me some advice, especially when I first moved here. Yeah, and and I and I handed down advice mm-hmm. that I got from um, uh, actually a designer that I worked with at Quirky. His name is Adam Pascal, um, and I I just asked him like, how do you rate yourself? How how do you put a price on your work? Um, and you know, there's there's sort of like two different ways that you can that you can quote. You can quote for hourly, or you can quote for the project. Right. And a lot of times, you know, I, I leave it up to the client okay. to decide that. Yeah. A lot because just in my experience, the client will either ask for a full project quote, or they will say, "What's your hourly rate?" Right. Um, but but yeah, he he even said in his original message, like clients aren't always into that because it incentivizes you to go slower. Yeah. But, Hourly is like, oh, well, I could do this project. And if I worked really slow, maybe I could drag it out for yeah. three months. But then again, like if you're working outside, if you, if say you're picking up freelance outside of your day-to-day job, then I would price myself higher and work like either work in an hourly or, or quote high because like, especially if it's like a rush job right. or something like that, that's something that you have to consider. Like is, is this project, is this project a rush or, or is it, do you have some time built into it? Mm-hmm. Um, but he got into the nitty gritty and said, um, you know, figure out what you would want from a salary job and then add the cost of insurance um and then, like the cost of taxes, right? So, Cause, like, because 30- there's no there's no benefits when you're freelancing, so you have to include that. We, I mean, we have to. I mean, I have to buy my own insurance. I don't know about you, James, but right. I uh, I actually am on my wife's health insurance. Nice. nice. Get married, freelance. <laughs> there, there you go. There's your tip. <laughs> Get married. Um. But uh. But yeah, I think you should cushion in those kind of costs into your rate right uh consider that you know at the end of the year like a good chunk of that is going to go out to taxes especially if you're living in new york city yeah um and then he said assume you're working 70 70 percent of your free time so uh you know you can afford to not be working 30 percent. so like you know because, basically price it out because that way 30 percent of the time you're trying to find clients or maybe you're doing like administrative tasks like like if you're if you have to take a day off to, I don't know because you're sick or maybe because you have to travel. I mean, you don't get vacation time when you're yeah. a freelancer, you know. And then he added he added this note to it, which I think is really valuable. Which is you should assume that any customer will try to haggle you down. You know, th- it's a negotiation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you should always start high. Like always start higher than than you think. Yeah. And especially if you, <laughs> I've been in situations where I don't necessarily want the job. Like I don't need the job. I don't want the job. So I will, I will go much higher than I normally. You'll say would. an absurd, absurd number. Yeah. Yeah, and and then negotiate down from that because like, if I don't get this job, I'm totally fine. Right. You know, and uh, and I mean that is, honestly, actually that's. That's kind of a good way to approach freelance in general. I agree. Mm -hmm. Because I have, I've threatened to like walk away from a project like a week before it started because I thought the rate was way too low. 
and and they came back and like met me where I was where I was asking for. Yeah, and and I mean I think there is a good a lot of good rule of thumb for your friends your friends rule. Um, for me, I I've taken that rule and I've kind of embodied it, but I have also like add on a bit of my my thoughts. Let me hear what you baked into that. What I my my Nick Baker <laughs> baked in prices. Easy um, Baker oven. So you've introduced me to the hourly rate thing. I've always priced my my design work as project based, mm. um, and I I try to do that even if someone asks for my hourly rate. But when you go into work in the city, like inside uh, a company, like you go in and you sit in there at their desks and work with them, I think hourly is fine. Um, but if you're, you know, consulting with a, a client and they, you know, want you to design X product because they're, you know, they have a Kickstarter for their new bottle opener, <laughs> you know, they want you to design the new bottle opener. That's when you base project um, for a couple reasons. I think. If you price it right, you're giving them a lot more value, um, and, and you're getting paid well. You don't ever want to price a project rate way too low. That you know, let's say you priced a project for three thousand dollars, and then you worked for uh, I don't know six hundred hours. What is that? Fifty dollars an hour? <laughs> six hundred hours is five dollars an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. Uh, you never want to. You never want to run out of you always want to make sure your project rate is the correct rate. And this is how I figure that out. So what you do, you have a new client. They want you to design a bottle opener. So you sit down and you're like, okay, how long will it take me to design a bottle opener? Well, let's see. Maybe eight hours of sketching, um, eight hours of CAD, um, you know, five hours of CMF, color finish, you know, color material finish. And then let's say... You know, you have three hours of meetings with the client, right? So let's say that rounds out to like 30 hours, right? Now, that's what you wrote down, but here's the trick. You double it because it always takes you twice as long to do <laughs> all those things. So you get 60 hours, right? It takes you 60 hours to design this ball opener. And and you take those 60 hours and you times it by your suggested hourly rate, and you can really... The hourly rate thing, how you figure that out, I mean, Coraflot has a great guide on to how freelancers price themselves and the salaries of of things. But there's a lot of factors that go into your hourly rate and how you price yourself. Not only is it what city you live in, um, you know, if you live in a, a expensive city like San Francisco or New York, you have to price yourself higher. Right. Um, but also think about supply and demand do you need this project like you were saying james like are you working full-time at a company and you're just doing this project in your free time well your free time should cost money i mean this is your free time yeah you don't need this money this is like you know if, if a client wants to work with you price it high um so yeah you times that by your hourly rate and then you get your your project quote um i i'll, I'll divulge my hourly rate uh I am in anywhere from like 80 to like 120, mm -hmm. but please be reminded that that is in New York City, and I'm also, it's a supply and demand game, right? Yeah. If if one client says, no, this is too high, that's okay. There's plenty of other clients. Right, right. You just, you don't necessarily, the, it's a delicate dance because you also don't want to um, leave a bad taste in their mouth of like, of like, oh, well, we can't, we're not going to like hire that. It's, you it's tough. You know, it's, you know, you never want to come off as like someone who like is too good for a project like that. Right. Um, but also you have to understand like y your time is valuable. You know, you don't want to just give away your, I mean, this is your life. Yeah. That's how, that's, this is how life works. You <laughs> trade your time for, money and absolutely how much is your time worth and i think um you know the other thing is uh oh gosh i, I think the other thing is, is if you are very honest with your client about like how like your thought process behind how you're pricing mm -hmm. like 
you know, I, I've specified to clients, like, since this is a rush job and, and all of the, and I'm going to be working hours, you know, outside hours or even weekend hours or whatever, right. this is why I priced it here. Right. And I think that, I think that's a really good way of managing that relationship is just being transparent and honest about like why, why you're pricing something a certain way, because it might come across as like much more expensive than they're, than they're used to. But I think they're also very aware of like, you know, somebody has been given a task of like, you need to, you need to finish this by this time. And, and like, even if you need to hire a freelancer, like we have this budget for this, like, you need to you need to be honest about like yeah this is going to take time away from like my life right and 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 so and and times that i normally would not be working and just be honest and transparent about it i think there is there's like i hate to like be like the oh honesty is the best policy type person but i do think that like as much as you can have an honest relationship with your client without divulging too much, but like enough to be enough to be like, you know, transparent enough to have established a good relationship with them and, I, I and agree. an honest relationship with them, then like there's there's also respect that is built between you and the client. And uh, yeah, that's that's going to pay dividends in the long run. I, I definitely agree. You know, clients, great ones are hard to come by. Like clients are like managing clients, especially when you do like remote work and things like that. It's a little easier when you can get to go into a company and kind of join the, the company as a whole. But when you're just yourself managing a client that's, you know, trying to do this Kickstarter ball opener. Sometimes it's a little tough, you know, maybe the client doesn't quite understand design or doesn't understand the process. What I like to do is I like to lay out kind of the milestones and I also pr- like break down the prices. So if my, you know, if I quoted this bottle opener, it's going to cost me $5,000 to design. I'll divvy up the prices into, you know, four or five sections of like, all right, you know, give me $1,000 to start the project. I'll do some concept sketches. We'll refine those concept sketches by this date. And then, you know, three days later, here is your deadline to give me feedback. Mm. And then when you give me feedback, I'll do another round of concept sketches. That'll take me another week. And then feedback some more. And then you'll pay me another thousand. And then you kind of like, you kind of do step by step. You ask for money up front. Yeah. Yeah. I When I do my remote clients, like project-based clients, I'll... I'll break it down in kind of step by step format because not only does it give them again that honest look at the process and the timeline, but it also gives me a goal to to work towards. Like, oh, I said, you know, back when we started this project in that email or you know document, it said that I was supposed to do this concept sketch by, you know, October twentieth. Right. And by the way, I gotta get on that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I uh. I actually would love to see that breakdown. You want to see that? Because I'm not used to to uh, quoting things by project. Right. I'm used to hourly rates. And like, there's not really a good resource to look at for how to break down like a, an entire project quote. Right. I kind of generally, I break it down into two phases. You have concept phase and CAD phase. Mm-hmm. You know, concept phase is all about sketching, come on, coming up with the idea. CAD phase is all about taking the idea that you and your client decided on and executing on it, you know, printing it out, testing it if you need to, refining the the measurements, the weight, whatever it is. Um, those are my two main phases. And then eventually I turn over the design to the client 